Hey everyone, hope you're doing fantastic. My name is Mo and in this video I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about home country bias when it comes to investing in the stock market. Now recently I came across a wonderful post by one of my friends on Blossom app uh, called Dan where he talked about this topic. In fact, um, this is a topic that recently I've seen several posts on Blossom but Dan really shared a wonderful research by Vanguard Canada on this topic. So we're going to dive into that and I, I'm going to share some of my reflections on that article, what really stood out for me and some of my aha moments. And lastly, I will provide a high level quick update on where our portfolio is, the portfolio that my wife and I have investing in the stock market. For those of you who've been following our journey, you know that mainly we are invested currently in three funds. Uh, one of them is considered an all-in-one index fund ETF, which is X equity. The other two are mainly kept in my personal RSP account because they're in USD. And one of them gives us exposure to the entire US stock market, which is VTI. And the other one gives us exposure to the entire stock market in the world based on the market cap, which is available with ticker symbol VT. This article is called A Case for Global Equity Diversification. It's by Bilal Hassanji. And it's recently published by Vanguard. Thanks, Dan, again for sharing this with us. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's easier for folks to see essentially what it talks about uh, this article at a high level is about the importance of having diversification, why it is crucial for investors to look into diversification across different geographies to reduce their portfolio risk over time. And one way to do so is by getting exposure to uh, the, the stocks and investments outside of Canada, as an example. So um, given that this research is done by uh, the Vanguard Investments Canada, a lot of the focus that they have and the home bias that they're talking about, they're talking about home bias in, in Canada. Uh, they talk about the how, as a whole, Canada, when it comes to its share as part of the global markets, only accounts for about 3.5%, whereas when we look at Canadian investors' uh, geographic equity allocation, it's somewhere closer to that 52%, uh, percent, uh, which is quite excessive. In fact, even though it's over time, this proportion has declined, still it's uh, quite high. I definitely encourage you to check out this article. There's a ton of uh, interesting nuggets in there for you to take a look at. For instance, they talk about how in Canada, the top 10 holdings account for a large portion of market weight around 37% how but but however it's not the case for other markets so for example if you look at the global equity market the top 10 holdings only accounts for 15.6% uh, in other words what they're trying to indicate is that um, in many cases in Canada Canadian markets they're very much concentrated uh, among um, a few businesses and also very much concentrated by only certain sectors such as energy sector and financial sectors and we don't get a ton of exposure. In fact, we are underrepresented in other sectors such as uh, healthcare, uh, as well as information technology. You can see how the Canadian equity market has sector bias towards more, mostly towards energy, financials, and to some extent then materials. The one part that really stood out for me and perhaps the one that triggered me to ask the question on Blossom first uh, was around what is that per ideal percentage then? So when we talk about how much of uh, exposure do we want to get to investments in Canada? As somebody uh, he that invests in Canada, many of us, in fact, on Blossom app or on YouTube that follow me, my journey, if you're a Canadian, you're wondering, okay, what is that ideal number? Based on this um, article, one thing that stood out for me is their research and they shared that they have done, conducted a minimum variance analysis. So they've tried, they've conducted this analysis to try to find what is the optimal home bias allocation for investors in Canada. Now, I'm not going to lie, I had to do a little bit of reading to see, okay, what is meant by minimum variance analysis? It is a technique used in finance to try to construct a portfolio of assets that has the lowest possible risk and tries to use that technique to ensure optimization and aiming to minimize the variance of portfolio's return. And the idea behind being to find a combination of assets that will provide the highest return for a given level of risk. Now, going back to this article from Vanguard now, in figure six, that's when they've con they're showing the results of that analysis. In order for them to do so, what they've done, they've looked into two specific scenarios. One scenario is 
the, the scenario of 100% equity portfolio. So think about something like X equity or V equity, whereby 100% of your exposure is to, to stocks. The other scenario, they've looked into a combination of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. For this one, think about something like, um, I would say VBAL, VBAL or XBAL, XBAL, roughly around 60% of their exposure is to stocks, 40% to bonds. And then as part of this, minimum variance analysis, they've started to gradually lower the exposure to Canadian market and see how uh, the variance um, is uh, kind of changing over time and which, which at what threshold, at what point they're getting that optimal point. So I'm going to jump over to this, the figure number six. You can see the footnotes and a few other details. As you see, uh, the lowest level of this uh, kind of curve is where that would be the ideal optimal point because that's when you have the lowest level of change in portfolio volatility. So that was the optimal intention for this analysis. And where they find found out to be the optimal point is highlighted here in uh, black, in bold colors for you. So you see, it says looking at the data, the optimal asset allocation for Canadian investors is a 30% allocation to Canadian equities and a 70% allocation to international equities because it has shown to minimize the long-term volatility of their portfolio. Now, I'm not, uh, in this case, I'm not the researcher having conducted this research and definitely need to educate myself a little more around the minimum variance analysis, how it's been done and um, what the thought process behind is. But it's, it was quite eye-opening to see uh, that, you know, even despite the fact that Canadian equities account for only about 3.5% of the world uh, overall, um, you know, size, they still think that a 30% exposure to Canadian equities is that optimal point. The other piece, I'm um, going to just jump into the conclusion. Uh, they talk about a, a few other factors that also play a part when it comes to determining why maybe having a slightly higher home bias or home, expo home exposure um, to the home country investments is not such a bad idea. They talk about things like minimizing volatility, declining trend of domestic equity preference for both individuals and pension investors, uh, as well as other benefits such as diversifications, portfolio implementation cost, and favorable tax consideration, as well as currency effects. Those are some of the other consideration um, that they have taken into account. I will definitely add the link um, to this article in the video description uh, and definitely you can also check it out on the post by Dan on his Blossom uh, post. I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts around that? Do you tend to agree with the findings of this research by Vanguard Canada? What is your current status when it comes to your exposure to Canadian stocks and market versus uh, the rest of the world? Well, at what percentage are you currently at? For me, uh, as you can see from the dashboard that I've developed, currently about 23% of our portfolio is ex exposure to Canadian markets. And the remaining is to international, including the USA, international as developed, excluding uh, Canada and US and emerging markets. The international, I just want to point out that the term used here, and it's very much used commonly in, across, I think, various type of uh, portfolios, refers to developed markets excluding Canada and US. Um, and then USA is obvious, Canada is obvious, and emerging markets, as the name suggests, refers to the emerging uh, market world, such as countries such as, uh, you know, India, China, Brazil, and so on and so forth. Uh, as for our portfolio, as I promised, I'm going to give you a quick overview of where things are at. Current size of the portfolio is just shy of $467,000. Our three whole main holdings are X equity, VT, and VTI. VTI is the one that is still showing positive return at 1%. X equity is currently down by 3.5%, and VT is down by 3.6%. Over the past week, what we have done, we've continue to add more to our uh, shares of X equity. We picked up more shares of X equity, both in our Smith Maneuver portfolio, as well as in our non-registered accounts. Currently, we have a total of 16,507 shares of X equity. That's our largest holding currently with a market value of approximately $425,000. The reason we are heavily invested in X equity is that it's a very much diversified all-in-one ETF. It's a, it provides us 100% exposure to stocks, across the world, including U.S., Canada, international and emerging markets. Our next big holding is shares of VT, Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund. We have 206 shares of it. 
with a total market value of currently about $226,000. And lastly, we have shares of VTI, 53 shares of those. It's Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. It gives us exposure to the overall US stock market. It currently sitting around $15,500 in market value. The expected dividend income for this portfolio as a whole is $9,797. The average dividend yield for this portfolio is approximately 2.1%. The focus of this portfolio is not dividend. In fact, the majority of the focus is on growth. However, there is that um, decent amount of dividend that is also earned on the side as, as well, which as we receive them, we are pretty much um, all the time reinvesting them back into our existing shares and buying more shares of high quality funds that we have in our portfolio. The overall return for this portfolio is currently down. We are currently showing an unrealized loss of 16,267. However, if I look at my portfolio as a whole, uh, ever since I started investing, uh, I have deposited a total of $445,000 and it's showing to be up by still as a whole total return 4.9%. Lastly, the average management expense ratio across the board for this entire portfolio is at 0.19%, uh, mainly because the highest fee here belongs to Exequity, which is a very uh, decent fee of only 0.20%. Uh, keep in mind with Exequity, we are already getting automatic uh, rebalancing as well as a diversified approach to the entire stock market, making things a lot simpler and easier for us. That's why we are not worried about it whatsoever. And I think overall, this is a small fee to pay for the ease of uh, investing in this portfolio. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video until the end. I hope you found it beneficial and hopefully it inspired you and gave you some new insights and new ideas to reflect on and learn about. If you thought you got something of value from this video, I really appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel both on YouTube, Momentum Finance, as well as follow us on Blossom Social App. If you haven't joined Blossom App yet, I definitely encourage you to do so. There are a ton of valuable conversations and learnings that happen on the app among different members you could also follow uh, your favorite members hopefully i being one of them their trades as they happen uh, real time on blossom app as well uh, you can definitely refer to the link provided in the description of the video or available on the social links on my social channels to easily join blossom app thank you and i hope to see you all next time